In Colorado, we're really interested in what happens when you put solar panels on top of grasslands because Colorado has a lot of dry land agriculture. So if we can put solar panels on that land and also keep that land in production for the grazers and also make all that solar energy, then it turns into a win-win scenario. I'm Matt Sturcio. I'm a PhD student here at Colorado State University. What I'm doing at Jack Solar Garden is trying to understand how the rainfall and light are redistributed in a solar array, and then also how that ends up manipulating the grassland productivity beneath it. There's these unique microenvironments that occur within a solar array from the rainfall redistribution that happens when you have a single axis tracking panel. So a single axis tracking panel follows the sun across the sky. So it's tipping to the east in the morning, tipping to the west in the afternoon. And then there's also these dynamic shading patterns that occur at the same time. So in the morning, if it starts raining, it's gonna drip off to that eastern edge. And in the afternoon, if it starts raining, it's gonna drip off to that western edge. And because we're in Colorado and most of the rainfall happens in the afternoon, that western edge gets pounded and it gets a lot of soil moisture accumulating in that area. What we're really interested in is if you get more water dumped onto one side from a solar panel, then will that create more grass as well? What we ended up finding out is that the side that gets all that rainfall redistribution doesn't actually have the most productivity, and that has to do with the time of day when light is available. So now we've started designing more experiments to try and tease apart what the drivers are of this interaction. Is it the timing of sunlight being available? Is it actually the dryness of the air in the afternoon? Or is it a combination of soil moisture, dryness of the air, intensity of light? So a microclimate is basically what a plant is experiencing throughout the course of a day. So if a plant gets light in the morning, that microclimate would be light in the morning, high relative humidity, and lower temperatures. It's just like a stats card where it would be something like, this year, in 2021, the MVP was the eastern edge that received morning light. It had higher humidity and lower temperatures. And then the western edge, came in second place, and it had really good soil moisture, but it got afternoon light, which means that it got way hotter temperatures to experience while it's trying to photosynthesize, and then it also got a much drier air, which means that it's gonna be pulling more water out of the plant. There's temperature optimums for plants, and for some plants, like the brome that grows at Jack's, the temperature optimum is a lot closer to 30 degrees than 35 degrees. So once you exceed 30 degrees, you're actually reducing the amount of photosynthesis that can happen for that plant. We found that leaf temperatures are about four degrees centigrade, so that's like seven degrees Fahrenheit cooler on average inside of a solar array versus outside of a solar array. There are a lot of plants that could benefit from this lower temperature during the middle of summer in Colorado. So leaves have stomata on them, and stomata is where gas exchange occurs. And what happens is they open up their stomata to let carbon in. And meanwhile, when they open their stomata, water is escaping. So the humidity, or how dry the air is, plays a big role on how much water a plant is going to lose through their stomata while they're taking in the carbon and photosynthesizing. If it's hotter out, like plants that are in the western edge, it's actually going to pull more water out because it's also drier during the afternoon when sunlight is available. If it is in the morning when it's more humid outside, there's less pull from the atmosphere because there's more water in the air. So they're actually not gonna lose as much water. There's this trade-off between opening your stomata, losing water and gaining carbon. And that plays out way differently on the edge that receives morning sunlight and the edge that receives afternoon sunlight. On the edges of a solar array, you have much more production than you have in a normal grassland. So you have way increased productivity on one edge, way increased productivity on the other edge, basically the same between those rows, and then directly underneath you have way less. So on one edge, the reason why you get more productivity is because you're receiving a lot more soil moisture, and soil moisture is really important for grass productivity in a water-limited system like out here in Colorado. And then on the other edge, the reason why you're seeing a lot more productivity, the most productivity even, is because it's getting this morning sunlight. 
And morning sunlight means that the humidity in the air is gonna be higher, so it's gonna be more moist, and there's gonna be lower temperatures, so it's gonna be a lot less drying of an effect happening during the time period when photosynthesis is happening. So the area directly beneath the panel is going to be receiving way less sunlight and very few inputs of soil moisture directly from rainfall. So then on average, when you look at grasslands outside of a solar array and inside of a solar array, you actually see a reduction of about 9% within the solar array. And most of that is attributed to the space directly underneath panels that receives much less rainfall and much less sunlight but the amount of electricity that you're creating on that land at the same time with that small reduction of productivity is gonna completely outweigh that small reduction of productivity. I think the next step and what we're really interested in is implementing solar arrays in degraded agroecosystems. In the West, there's a ton of degraded agricultural land as a product of overgrazing, conventional ag practices, and water scarcity. These lands all could benefit from the microclimates that are provided by solar arrays. This redistribution of rainfall from solar panels actually can successfully emulate large rainfall events. And in a semi-arid environment like Colorado, it's really important to have large rainfalls because small rainfall events just evaporate immediately. I think the biggest takeaway is that you have this diversity of responses within a solar array. The microclimates could potentially increase resilience to climate stress because of the reduction of evapotranspiration and the increase in overall productivity on different drip edges. There's a lot of really important questions about how we handle environmental problems of the future. So it's really exciting to get to work in a system that is dual use, both energy producing and keeping land in production.